Welcome to ASGCC Sermons, where faith comes alive and the Word of God transforms lives. We're thrilled to have you join us for another inspiring journey into the heart of Scripture. Whether you're tuning in from your living room or on the go, we believe that God has a powerful message tailored just for you. At ASGCC, we're more than a community. We're a family of believers seeking to grow in our relationship with God and one another. Each sermon is a unique opportunity to explore the timeless truths of the Bible, discovering practical insights that will empower you in your daily walk. So grab your Bible, open your hearts, and let's get ready to embark on a transformative experience. It's not just another sermon, it's a divine encounter. Thank you for joining us on this journey of faith. Let's dive into the word together and allow God's love and wisdom to guide us in every step of life. Welcome to ASGCC Sermons. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So this morning, uh, I wanted to uh, come to you and 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 I wanted Leander to play that song to remind us that God is bigger than that. Mm. Uh, he's, he's bigger than that. And the title of my message this morning is just that. He's bigger than that. Amen. And some of the lyrics to that song is so awesome and wonderful and true. Uh, he's bigger than the universe. And we know that he's bigger than the universe because he created it. And nothing that you can create can be bigger than you. Amen. Yeah. So he's bigger than the yeah. universe. It says, he, she said, he's bigger than any problems that you can ever face. And she just goes on and she tells you how big he is. He's bigger than cancer. He's bigger than diabetes. He's bigger than high blood pressure. He's just bigger than that. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, I just want to come to you and not keep you too long, but I just want to remind you that he's bigger than that. How many of you have stood at the edge of a problem that felt like an abyss. It felt like a big old hole was just going to swallow you up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it could have been a loss of a job that throws your future into uncertainty, especially if you have a family and children, you know, uh, and you, uh, or a health report of a child or a parent or even a spouse or even your own health report mm -hmm. that frightens you to death has you so scared because you don't know which direction to go in or what may happen with that disease or that cancer or whatever that sickness may be. These burdens that we face in this life, whether they be a, 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 a betrayed marriage or a broken relationship or the death of a loved one, and it leaves this gaping hole in your heart. These are burdens that, that loom so large that sometimes they can cast a shadow. I mean, a huge shadow over everything concerning your life. And you know, when something shadows you, you, know, you get no sun. You know, all you have is that shadow. And when it shadows you, you look like you see that problem again. Because, because you there's you and then there's a shadow of you. And all those situations seem big, so large that you just don't think you can overcome any of it. And they blot out your hope and they can cause your faith to fade away and they obscure the light and the love of Jesus. But in those moments, I just want you to know that it's easy to feel broken and alone. I know I've been there. Easy to feel broken and alone. Mm -hmm. And it caused you to want to shrink mm -hmm. You know, under the weight of those worries, you just want to go away. You don't want to be bothered. You don't want to do what you're doing anymore. You're just convinced that facing these problems is just so insurmountable. They're like giants. You just don't know. You can't get around them. You can't get on them. You can't get over them. You're in that moment and you just want to get in the bed and pull the covers over your head. You don't want to go any further. I've been there. Life throws things our way. There's nothing we can do about that. Mountains of worry sometimes, valleys of despair. When we're worried about our children, we're concerned about their future. Mm. We're worried about our health. Our marriage is not going the way we want it to go. It's on the brink of, the, of separation or divorce. The people on your job is just don't understand you and you don't understand them. And all hell have seemed to broken loose. 
all things that threaten to drown us because they're so huge at that moment when we're, when we're staring at them. Where do we go? Who do we turn to? We look at these challenges sometimes, this is Tanisha, and we think there's just no way out. How can I overcome all this? It's too much. It's just too big. But today, mm -hmm. today, I, I want to challenge you and I want to remind you of a truth, an absolute truth that can shift the very foundation of all your worries mm -hmm. and all your concerns. I want to remind you of a truth that can bring you comfort and strength and hope in the face of anything and everything that could that you could ever go through. No matter what it is. I'm here to remind you this morning. You and to tell you that there's nothing. That you go through that he's not bigger than. He's bigger than that. He's bigger than anything you could ever face. Who is this he? Who is this person that I'm referring to? He is our God. He's the almighty one. He's the everlasting father. He's the prince of peace, Jesus. The God who speaks galaxies and spoke the world into existence. The same God that bottles up our tears when they fall from our eyes and, and keeps them as a memorial. The God who the word, who the word of God says lifts up our heads when they're hung down low because of sorrows and worries and anxieties and the things of the world that has gotten to us. Sister Ken, I'm talking about the ancient of days. I'm talking about the one who was, who is, and who is to come. I'm talking about the almighty God, the I am that I am. The everlasting father, the prince of peace. Come on, guys, you know this already. The problems you face, the anxieties and the worries that's gripping you right now, right now in this very moment that you haven't shared with anybody. Things you've gone through in your life, even maybe even in your childhood. You're going through right now secretly. And you think nobody knows. But no matter how insurmountable they may seem to you, they are just a grain of sand on the largest beach in the world. Mm -hmm. No matter how daunting your worries and concerns are, they are just compared to nothing when it comes to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we shouldn't be sitting here just giving up, committing suicide. You know, just down and out. Don't know which way to go or where to turn. Just just get just give up on life completely. We can't do that as Christians and believers because we know that he's bigger than that. Mm. Amen. So when you think of the vastness of the ocean and we stand on the shores and we look at that ocean and we see all that water, we can't even see past it or beyond it. I mean, you can't see beyond the horizon. It's so huge. It's so mass. It's an endless horizon. But we want, I want you to know that God holds that very ocean in his hands. That's how big he is. He determines the currents. He determines how far it goes. He stops the water where he wants it to stop. He determines how deep it is. He determines his very existence. That thing that we cannot even imagine he's bigger than that. Mm -hmm. Think of the tallest mountain that you've ever seen or that you've ever heard of or studied about. It's this scrape in the sky and you can stand at the bottom of the base of that mountain and look up and you can't even see the ending of it. It's so high. And we just stand in awe of that mountain and just look at it and think, oh my God, how did that get there? What is this? But God formed that mountain. Mm -hmm. He did that. Each grain of sand on the beach, each towering peak, he holds the mountains in the palm of his hand. And if he can take care of them, mm -hmm. they don't tumble over. They don't fall. 
that he can handle our small pebble of a problem. Amen. I want you to turn with me to read Isaiah chapter 40. Turn with me to read Isaiah chapter 40. Uh, amen. And I want you guys to everybody to turn there because this is so important. And this will help us understand that the Lord has no equal. Your problems don't equal him. Your situations don't equal him. Your worries don't equal him. The Satan doesn't equal him. Your boss doesn't equal him. Death doesn't equal him. Nothing equals, nothing matches him. He is God and God alone. Amen. So when you look at verse 12 of, of Isaiah chapter 40, are you guys there this morning? Isaiah chapter 40, let's look at verse 12. And I know that I have so much in this message that I'll never get through it this morning because the Holy Spirit was just talking, talking, talking. I got up this morning and was even adding more to what I already had, but that's okay. We'll get through what we get through and we can always finish it later. Amen. And it reads, who else has held the oceans in his hands? And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. So yours may read differently if you have another version. It says, who has held the oceans in his hands? Did I not just tell you he holds the oceans in his hands? Who has measured off the heavens with his fingers? Who else knows the weight of the earth or has weighed the mountains and hills on a scale? Who is able to advise the spirit of the Lord? Who knows enough to give him advice or to teach him? Has the Lord ever needed anyone's advice? Does he need instruction about what is good? Did someone teach him what is right or show him the path of justice? No. Verse 15 says, no, for all the nations of the world are but a drop in the bucket. They are nothing more than dust on the scales. You see dust. You know what dust looks like. He picks up the whole earth as though it was a grain of sand. Mm. The whole earth, he picks it up as if it was a tiny little grain of sand. Verse 16, all the word, the wood of Lebanon's forest and all of Lebanon's animals could not be enough to make a burnt offering worthy of our God. The nations of the world are worth nothing to him. His, in his eyes, they count for less than nothing. Mere emptiness and froth. Mm -hmm. And you know what froth is when you go to Starbucks and you get your coffee and they put that little froth over top of it before you can start drinking it is gone away. To whom can you compare God? What image can you find to even resemble him? Can he be compared to an idol formed in a mold, overlaid with gold and decorated with silver and chains? Or if people are too poor for that, they might at least choose wood that would decay and a skilled craftsman to crave an image that, would, that won't fall down. Haven't you heard? Don't you understand? Are you deaf to the words of God? The words he gave before the world began. Are you so ignorant? Verse 22. God sits above the circle of the earth. The people below seem like grasshoppers to him. He spreads out the heavens like a curtain and makes his tent from them. He judges the great people of the world and brings them all to nothing. They hardly get started, barely taking root when he blows on them and they wither. The winds carry them off like shape. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal? Ask the Holy One. Look up into the heavens. Who created all the stars? Who brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each by its name? Because of his great power and incompatible strength. Not a single one is missing. Oh, Jacob, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? Oh, Virginia, how can you say that the Lord does not see your troubles? Oh, Leander, how can you say that the Lord does not see your troubles? Oh, Israel, how can you say God ignore your rights? Have you, not, have you never heard 
Have you never understood? The Lord is ever an everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. Mm. But those who wait and trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Isaiah is telling you everything you need to know about our God and telling you that you need to understand that he's bigger than that. Think of David, a young shepherd standing defiant before, the, before that big king, that big giant Goliath. Goliath, he was a, the champion of the Philistines. He was a giant warrior wearing ironclad armor, just doing his thing, had everybody scared, the very presence of him scared all those people almost to death. He instilled fear in the hearts of seasoned Israelite soldiers, the Bible said. And But yet, David, being a young man, what did he do? With a sling and a few smooth pebbles, the Bible says he saw that Philistine differently. He saw that his God was bigger than that. And with an unwavering faith, David took Goliath down. Amen. Amen, somebody. And the story David of David and Goliath is a reminder of, of the truth that transcends time. This is a truth that transcends time. It goes beyond us. Our battles, they don't belong to us. This is a truth that we need to understand. Your battles, my battles, they don't belong to you. They're not yours. Amen. The Bible says they belong to the Lord. Come on. So clearly you're going to have them or he wouldn't have said your battles don't belong to you. They belong to me. When we place our trust in him, he equips us to face everything and anything that comes our way. We might he may not remove that mountain. But I'm here to tell you that he will allow you a way to climb over it. Amen, somebody. He might not calm the storm, but he, but he will be that anchor in that storm. So when that ship is roaring, like the, with Jesus and all these are metaphors that, I, that I'm coming to you with of things that Jesus actually did, provide a way out of when there was no way. The storm is raging. Winds are all around us. The boat Seems like it's going to turn over. But Jesus can speak into your life and say, peace, be still. Amen. Mm -hmm. And cause everything that's causing you to shake and to be have anxiety and worry over to stop instantly. We have to trust him. We have to put all our trust in him. And that's why I'm letting you know this morning that he's bigger than that. And because he's bigger than that, that doesn't mean our problems just disappear. No, I'm not saying that. It extends uh, to our fears, our doubts, our limitations, all of that. The things that you feel limited that you can't do, he's bigger than that. The fears that you have, he's bigger than that. The doubts that you have about him, he's bigger. He's even bigger than that. It extends to the deepest recess of our being, of who we are. All the little secrets and the little things we hold on to and the little things that's in our head and our minds that tell us you can't do that or you're not worthy of this or you'll never be able to do that. or You know, you're no good and you're no that. And you just, you, you know, all the things that you hear or have heard that has hindered you. I am here to tell you that he's bigger than that. Surely none of this stuff that goes on in your life, it's, it's not trivial. I'm not making it small. I, but what I'm saying to you is that it's, he's bigger than that, no matter how big it is. Amen. You know, so he cares about every detail. I'm telling you, even the tears, he cares about them enough to put them in a bottle and keep them as a memorial. So when we get into heaven, we can see that Jesus Christ has a bottle with all our tears. That's how much he cares for us. 
He cares about every despair we're going through, every triumph. He even loves it when we triumph over things. He likes that. Amen. No matter how small or great the victory is, he likes it and he wants you to give him the glory. He sees it all. Amen. There's nothing that happens that God does not see. Mm. So he's bigger than that means we don't have to face any situation alone. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. He's right there with us. Thank you. It means that when we feel small and we feel alone and we feel sad or depressed or even oppressed, our God is infinitely powerful. And he's right there with us to help us get through that situation. No matter what it is, Sister Tanisha, I don't care if it's death. It doesn't matter if it's a divorce. It doesn't matter if it's a defiant child. It doesn't matter if it's your job or loss of your job or loss of your home or loss of your car or whatever the case may be. God is bigger than that. When we surrender our burdens to him and we have to surrender them. A peace washes over us. Mm. A peace that surpasses all human understanding is what it says in Philippians chapter four, verse seven. All understanding. And Jesus went on to say, the world didn't give you that peace and the world can't take it away. That's only the peace that he can give us. It's the peace that comes from knowing we are not a minnow in that sea of troubles. Mm. We're not. It's the peace that comes from knowing that we're not alone, that we have an almighty God on our side. And we're going to face some things in this world. You've already gone through some. Look how you thought at that moment your world was falling apart. Now, fast forward to today. He was bigger than that. He got you through that. Whatever that is, he's bigger than it. He got you through it. He brought you here. And the next thing that you're going to face, that next insurmountable mountain that you're going to look up. And it's so vast and huge, you can't see how to get around it. You certainly can't go over it and don't think you can climb over it. Let me tell you, he's bigger than that problem. So God asked me the question this morning. He says, daughter, do you believe what you're preaching? Do you truly believe that I'm bigger than that? Bigger than your worries, bigger than your concerns. Do you believe it? Mm. And I had to look at God in the spirit and with my spirit say, yes, Lord, I believe it. Mm -hmm. Then live like you believe it, he says. He told me to live like I believe he's bigger than that. Mm. Amen, somebody. Because I have little things that concerns me. I have anxiety about things. I have concerns about situations. But God has to tell me, daughter, I'm bigger than that. Do you trust me? Do you believe? I believe. But God, help me yep. in my unbelief. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. So the next time you face a seemingly insurmountable problem, take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And remember, yes. he's bigger than that. Mm -hmm. The apostle Peter tells us to cast our cares on him. Because he cares for us. Because he, because he cares for you. you. Let his strength be your strength. You. Because he says when you are weak. Then or have you been made strong? Mm. So you got to get to that weakness in order to be strong. You're not strong when you think you're strong. You're strong when you're weak. Because his strength becomes your strength. His love for you. The grace that he has for you. Let that be your guide. Let that be your comfort. Walk. In this life that Jesus has called you to have that unshakable faith that, that doesn't matter what comes my way. I know that God is immensely bigger than that. Amen, somebody. And as for me in my house, you have to be able to say we will serve the Lord. Amen. You have to make sure of that thing. 
That as for me and my house, as for me and my, extend that, as for me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. My children have no choice but to serve the Lord. My husband has no choice but to serve the Lord. My family members have no choice but to serve the Lord. Why? Because I say so. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. See, you got to hit it right there because I say so. And the word of God backs it up. He says, I will save you and your household. Because, because a God who is bigger than anything we can face is also a God who calls us to be bigger than our circumstances. Because he's bigger, you're bigger. There's nothing that can come into your life that's bigger than you. Remember, it's coming into your life. So you're already bigger than whatever it is. And God has already equipped you to handle whatever it is. He calls us to love extravagantly, completely. Just do that thing. Just love and just be ready to love. And no matter what the situation might be, it's hard. Yeah. If these situations come into our lives, they are very difficult. And it's people. Mm. Like that song that uh, I forgot his name now says, deliver me from people. And then he turns around and says, deliver me because I'm one of those people. Mm. Come on, somebody. Amen. He calls us to just love and to forgive and to extend a helping hand to those who are in need, even when we're going through our own situations. We reach out, we reach down, we reach across, and we help others that have not gotten to that place to know that, yes, I'm going through. I don't like what it feels like. I don't like what it good, looks like. I don't like what my daughter has gotten herself into. I don't like the way my son is running around doing the things he's doing. But you know what? This too shall pass. Mm -hmm. My daughter will be saved. My son will be saved. This situation that's in my life right now, it will pass away. Why? Because my God is bigger than that. Amen, somebody. So let us walk in that unwavering truth. It is, you can't waver in that truth no matter what. No matter the storms you face, our God has got to be bigger than them. And you have to tell that you're bigger. God, you're bigger than this. I'm not worried because I know you got me. Amen. So we have to embrace those, those challenges that come our way. And that's why the Bible can tell us, don't think it's strange. When those storms start coming into your life, when those fiery darts are coming at you left and right, because you have a shield. Mm -hmm. You watch those movies, um, those back in the day old movies where the guys are out there fighting and they got the shields and they're throwing darts at them and they hold the shields up and the darts just hit the shields and fall away. We have that shield. Jesus Christ is that. His word is that. Prayer is that. Trusting him is that. Believing him. That's our shield. Hmm. He shields you from all those troubles. They're there, but they're not in you. And they're going to pass away. All of them. And then, and then we have to extend all that love that he's getting. That, that's love. God does that because of love. And so he wants us to extend that, extend that hope, extend that love, extend that, that grace to other people to say to the, this dying world that needs him so much. God is bigger than that. Mm. When your friends come to you with their situations and their problems, just say, hey, with boldness, God is bigger than that. Well, what do you mean? Explain to him what you mean. There's no problem, no situation, nothing. Amen. That can thwart the power of God in your life. Nothing that can keep him from loving you. Nothing that can keep him from protecting you. Nothing. When you belong to him, he got you. He's going to take care of what belongs to him. So our problems may seem insurmountable to us, but compared to God, they are minuscule. They are finite. 
They are nothing in his sight. Amen. So this doesn't mean, again, that our struggles aren't real. They are. But it means we don't have to face them alone, Sister Tanisha. We have God who is bigger than any problem, any fear, and any doubt. And I know we have them. Amen, somebody. The Bible is filled with stories. That's why we need to read it because it's filled with stories, filled with true stories. I don't even feel right calling them stories, but I just couldn't think of another name for them. But the Bible is filled with true stories, with history to remind us of this truth. Yes. We talked about David that being that shepherd boy, not a man, but a shepherd boy that faced mighty Goliath. In his eyes, he was outmatched. Yet, with God on his side, he brought that giant down. We, that's, a, that's a story that we just glaze over now because we're so familiar with it. But we have to remember, that's a true story. That actually did happen. Same God that protected David and gave him the power he needed to bring down that giant that, was, that he was facing. Mm. The same God that gives us the power to bring down the giants that we're facing in our lives. Chad Matt. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You remember them? They faced a fiery furnace. They were thrown in it, turned up seven times hotter than what it was. Even burned up the men that turned it up. Surely they must have felt fear and was frightened, but they didn't bow down to the problem. They didn't worship the problem. They didn't get in there and roll around in the problem. No, they stepped into that fire knowing that God was going to deliver them, trusting and believing that God was bigger than that furnace. God was bigger than that fire. Maybe you're facing the Goliath of a problem. Maybe you're facing a furnace fire. I don't know what's, what's going on in your life, but I know something is. Mm. How do I know that? Because we live in a dark fallen world. And Satan is in this world and he comes, but to steal, kill and destroy. He searches a thousand cracks, the Bible says, searching for a way to get in. So I know you have some concerns. I know you have some anxieties. I know they're there. But I'm here to tell you this morning that they're, that your God, Jesus Christ, is bigger than that. Remember, David's victory wasn't about his own strength. But it was about the power of the one who guided his hand. When he picked up those stones, it was God that guided his hand. God doesn't shrink in the face of our adversity. And he even tells us in the Bible, if you shrink back or you fall or you faint in the day of your adversity, he says, then you weren't worth anything to begin with. That's scripture. Mm -hmm. But you know you're worthy and you're worth it because Jesus Christ made you worthy and worth it. You are the righteousness of God because of what Jesus Christ did on that cross. So the truth is woven throughout scripture, throughout scripture. In fact, in Psalms uh, 90 verse 2, we read, before the mountains were born or you brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. This tells us that God existed before time, before creation, before our problems even come. Mm -hmm. God is already there. Already. He's already worked it out. He knows of the, the ending, the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Right. There's nothing that he doesn't see and doesn't know. Think about the vastness of this universe, the galaxies upon galaxies just swirling around in the cosmos. He spoke those into existence. This earth that you're walking around in, he didn't take his hands and build it. Sister Kim, he spoke it. He just opened up his mouth and there it was. That's power. That's authority. He knows the strand, the very strands of hair that's on your head. Even after you comb it and a thousand fall out, he knows exactly how many are left. That's how much he cares about you. He holds the universe in his hands and he also holds everything concerning you in those same hands. God loves us so much mm -hmm. that we could just understand how much God loves us, how much he loves you. 
if you get that, mm -hmm. then you will understand that there's nothing that could ever happen to you. There's nothing that you could ever go through that he's not bigger than, that he's not there for to help you get through it, to lead you and to guide you. So when you feel overwhelmed, just remember that he's bigger than that. His power is infinite. Here's how this truth can change our lives. And I wrote down a few things. One of the things it can do is it can shift our perspective. When we, when we see our problems in the light of God's bigness and his immensity and his largeness and his greatness, those things that we are going through, they lose their, 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 their power to terrify us and to bring us fear. One of the largest businesses that's growing in this country, and I believe around the world right now, is therapy. Mm. There was a time when therapy and going to therapy and going to, you know, going to get a psychiatrist, and it was like this thing you just didn't do. Mm. You just, you just, it was just something that you just didn't want anybody. But that's one of the biggest uh, growing uh, medical fields there is right now is therapy and psychology because people are succumbing to their situations and their problems. Things are happening around the world and, and in this United States, people are just going nuts and crazy, falling out, all types of things, killings, shootings, eating other people. Um, yes, eating, even eating other people, eating their own, the, their own legs and limbs because of their mentally disturbed. Just look around you. Look at the things you see on social media that are happening. These are these people have mental issues. And I'm not saying, and I know they're real. What I am telling you, that God is bigger than that. He's bigger than any mental issue. We have to trust and believe. It doesn't mean you don't go to the doctor to get the help, but you have to understand that he's bigger than that. Yeah. It can, it can, you know, and when we understand that, it can give us courage. Because we know uh, God is with us and we can face anything, even the most daunting challenges. It doesn't matter what they are. He's with us. It can foster trust. When you know that God is bigger than that thing, it fosters trust in him. We can surrender our anxieties to him, knowing we can handle them, that he can handle them far better than us. Isn't that a great thing to be able to take your problems and your concerns and your worries and just give them to the Lord? Dear God, I don't want them anymore. And trust that he's going to take care of those problems and those situations. So we just got to go forth knowing that no matter what storms we face, I just want you to understand that God is with you. He got you. I mean, we saw it in Revelations. We, we see it in, 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 in so many different stories in the Bible. And I don't have time to go through all of them. But when you ask the question, when a little kid asks his mom or dad, how big is God? Mm -hmm. we, we have to say, and all we can say, he's very big, but he's even bigger than that. Mm -hmm. God is transcendent. There's nothing that compares to him. He's bigger than everything that we can even imagine. Our minds have not seen, I can imagine our eyes have not seen, our ears have not heard. We don't know. We don't understand this. We don't get it. But we have to walk it out in faith, trusting and knowing no matter who asked the question. We have to come with the answer that he is big enough to create this whole entire universe. But don't let that scare you. Don't let that overwhelm you because he's still small enough to love little old us, to call us his friend, mm -hmm. to know us to want to be with us. So as vast and as large, as big as he is, he's still small enough to care and be concerned about each and every one of us. Amen. So all through the Bible, we're gonna, we can see that evidence of how great God is, but you have to open it up and read it. The Bible is just running over with stories that illuminate how he is, even creation, the parting of the Red Sea. When he got in, when Elijah got into it at, at Mount Carmel, Job in the whirlwind, the feeding of the 5,000, the resurrection, the Tower of Babel, the calming of the storm, Daniel in the lion's den, 
just go on and on and on. And I put all those stories in here with a little blurb about each and every one of them. But I'm not going to have time to talk about them, but they're in the Bible. And you can go in there and you can read. They're, those are insurmountable problems. Mm -hmm. Noah, what, what he went through. Jonah, what he went through. Jesus Christ, what he went through. Paul and Silas, what they went through. The Bible is full, full, running over mm. with, with goodness. goodness. And, and he's bigger than that stories. God is so big that he cannot be compared with anything or anyone else. Is what the Bible says. Since he created everything in existence, he is far superior than those creations. He is bigger in the sense that he cannot be confined by time or space. He is wiser using foolish things to confound those who think themselves wise is what the Bible says. He is infinite. While all created things are, are finite. He's infinite and we're finite. God, in fact, defies, defines, I'm sorry, greatness. And all other uses of the words are just nothing. When you look at the great men, when the history talk about great men and great men, they put Abraham Lincoln and um, some of the other presidents. My mind is going blank right now. There's a great men just to show you how great they are in my mind. I can't even remember their names, but by, but God is greater. That word doesn't even apply when it comes to God. He's so great. It doesn't even match really. But our limited voca vocation can't really explain how big he is. We just have to say he's bigger than that. He defines greatness and everything else that is great. So my final words to you this morning is when you face challenges that seems insurmountable, mm. so huge, so big, so great, let's remember, Leander, that he's greater than that. He's greater than that. Amen. He's greater than that, Dr. Right. Alexander. He's greater than that. Sister Kim, he's greater. Everyone who's under the sound of my voice, remember he's greater than greater. that. Greater. God, in fact, again, he defines greatness. His love and everything about him his, is infinite. The, his grace is all sufficient for every one of our needs, every one of our problems, every one of our situations. He's greater than that. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us today on ASGCC Sermons. We hope this time of worship, reflection, and teaching has been a source of inspiration and encouragement to you. As we come to an end of our time together, we want to extend a heartfelt invitation to those who may be listening or watching. If you've been touched by today's message and feel the stirring in your heart, we want you to know that God loves you unconditionally. The journey of faith is a personal one, and we believe that God is reaching out to you right now where you are. If you haven't experienced the life-changing love of Jesus Christ, we want to give you an opportunity to invite him in your life. If you desire to know God personally, to experience his forgiveness, and receive the gift of eternal life, we invite you to pray with us right now. You can simply repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you just as I am. I recognize that I am in need of your love and forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and I accept him as my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins and ask for your forgiveness. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and make me a new creation. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. I surrender my life to you, and I choose to follow you from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, we want to congratulate you on the most important decision of your life. We encourage you to connect with a local church, read the Bible, and spend time in prayer to nurture your newfound relationship with God. Thank you for being a part of the ASGCC family today. We look forward to the amazing journey ahead with you. Remember, God loves you, and we do too. May his grace and his peace be with you always.